There's 12,000 feet of fixed rail, continuous panel, and there's another little over 2,000 feet of wide out spec chain link on the job. A bunch of custom overheads, got some custom horse stalls, three arenas, some calf pens, goat pens, anything to do with animals. This is an animal science building, is that right? Yes, uh, they got rodeo team here. They're gonna be doing a farrier program here, veterinary program. Just in your fence alone, how much concrete do you have? Probably right around 160 yards. Oh my gosh. How many pounds of welding rod have you used? We are finishing up the last carton that makes 700. 700 pounds of rod, 160 cubic yards of concrete. And that might be just a little bit on the low side because some of these posts require more concrete than the others. And you dry packed all that, right? No. <laughs> this doesn't look normal. No, this was all something they had specced out. Every tie-in needed to be into a three by three angle, a three sixteenths. And it all has to be welded at every seam. Every tie-in has to be welded. And on this particular job, they specced it that every single panel where you join, like right here, has to be welded to the other panel. So every, every panel that is connected to another panel has to get tied in here and at the ends into the angle iron. And there's roughly 280 tie-ins just on angle iron alone. So when you say specs, there's rules. There is rules. There's so rules you have, that you have to follow. And you if you don't follow to. the rules, they're going to reject all your work. To an extent, yes. A lot of guys don't understand that you can have specs that you have to abide by. But being a professional in the industry, you can have a talk with your contractor. And if something's wrong and it's just not going to work, they will talk to their office. Nine times out of 10, they'll come back and they'll side with me and we will change that, we'll have a change order, everybody knows what's going on, and we will deviate from the drawings to give them a better product. With the appropriate documentation exactly. of why. Yes. That's interesting to know. I didn't know we could do that. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, let's, let's go see what Almanza has been up to. Right here we have one of six pens running up the hill just for holding stock, probably their cows and their rodeo horses and whatnot. And then this alleyway starts at the very top, comes all the way down. These drive gates actually swing across this drive opening here and go into this alleyway, which feeds everything into the building. So they can run animals into the indoor arena. There's a scale house right there. They got holding pens over there. They can process over there, shoot them back up the alleyway, put them back here. Uh, up here, we've got 16 stalls here and another 16 over here. They were all put on a slope and they're all really close together. So you're talking 12 foot on center. So what we did is we shot all this in, made sure we were straight both directions because a lot of times what happens is when you have runs that are really close together, if there's deviations in one run, even just a little bit can make it look really bad. So what we wanted to do is make everything run nice and flat both directions so that when you look at it, everything looks the same, everything lines up. So a lot of a lot of work and detail went into this just to make so that every single pen looks the same. So they're on a slope, so it's a self-mucking stall. You don't have to muck the stall? I don't know. Everything just runs out? Maybe. <laughs> so I see that there's a lot of very, very fine detail in this. Yeah. Everything is true and straight in line. All the caps, including the gate posts, are at the same elevation. Just looking across all 16 stalls, these vertical stays, all 16 down, are in the same exact position. Oh, and then obviously all the top rails, those have to match too. So not only did we have all these stalls up here, um, there's also two gates to every stall. So we got 64 gates that have to get incorporated along with making all this flat and look good. And how we did that was I actually have a fairly good relationship with the uh, dirt contractor on site. And what I had him do was come up here and shoot in my elevations for his final grade. And I pulled my measurements off of that. We shot in the tops by doing it that way. And that's why everything is perfect because it's all GPS in. So if you got a good connection with your other contractors, sometimes they'll help you out and it'll end up with a better product for you. Everything works better and you get a better product if everybody works together on site. Yes, don't screw your other contractors over. Uh, I was also noticing on your gates, you have some really nice greasable hinges. Yes, those are thousand pound rated greasables. So right here's another example of something that wasn't in the spec. They just had these 16 foot gates drawn in. And when you got a gate that long, that heavy, I mean, two inch frame, it's got a lot of sag. There was over two inches of drop from this end to that end. So what we did is we talked to the contractor and we put this truss system in on all these long gates to help with that and they can adjust these as needed over time.
All right, so here you have your perimeter fence that goes all the way around. You probably had some challenges there as far as elevation and dropping your top rail with your fence. Yeah, so a lot of this, like this perimeter, was not on a pre-graded flat surface. So we had to roll with what we were given. Which you see is what you get. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of this, I mean, other than like the horse stalls that were shot in clearly with GPS, we do all this by eyesight. So all your elevations are done by eyesight. All your lines done by eyesight. See, you probably pulled like a whole bunch of strings. No, for this. no. Pull the string to market and that's it. And, and it never comes back never out again. Never comes back out again. A lot of people don't believe us when they see it. I've had multiple guys show up on this particular job and ask where my string line's at. It's in my truck, right where it's supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> While we're up here, what is that? What is that one right there? That's, that's their outdoor area. roping arena. So they got a return alley that comes off here and then that ties back into their prefer at the end and okay. goes into their strip and shoot for their rope and steers. They have prefert that ties back in to our return alley over by the calf pens, which can cut their livestock back up to the stock pens or to the calf pens, whatever they're processing in there. Details, details, details. It's all in the details. And you have to be precise because when you're, when you're going from something that's fixed to something that is pre-manufactured out of a facility and they're bringing it here and dropping it in and hooking it together with pins, your tolerances are gonna change. So you almost have to have it preset up or make sure you pull a dead on measurement when you set, especially when you're breaking and starting again and they're tying in between. Otherwise you're gonna end up busting or you're gonna end up being too close. 100%. This little pen here is just to hold their goats in. They'll probably just take them by hand that way. That's gonna be their scale house right there where they're gonna bring in all the animals and they're gonna process them right over here, take them into the building, do whatever they need to do with them. So one thing I've noticed here is you have your panels all on the inside of the arena. Obviously there's spec to do with that, but if it wasn't spec'd out, why would you put your panels on the inside? Because that's the side that's gonna receive any sort of pressure out here. It's just a drive lane. There's nothing ever gonna be against that. The other thing that we did, since you're gonna be riding in here, we flipped the verticals this way, which created another challenge for us because we had to make sure that our layout missed all of our posts. And the reason we did that was to kick those verticals this side of the fence so that if you were riding a horse or something around, you didn't catch a toe and break your knee or your ankle by riding up next to the fence. It just helps you not get hung up as much. That's good thinking there. Great thinking. So we talked a little bit earlier about talking to your general contractor if some things don't quite line up on the drawings. This was also one of them. On the drawings, they had us tying into these existing posts on the front side of the cattle guard, which doesn't really work because if you were to get any animals loose in here, they can just cross the corner there. So right here, if we were to tie into this post or with the fence we brought in to this existing post, the problem with that is if they were to have an animal out, it could come right here to this corner and hop this corner and even a fairly small animal could hop this corner. So that's why we shifted everything back. So what we ended up doing was doing a change, bringing it into the center of the cattle guard like it's designed to be, and then bringing our fence back out just to deter people from walking across it. So when you're doing cattle guards and you're tying fence into the cattle guard, you need to make sure you're coming into the center of it because that's how they're designed to be. You have something on the inside of that big old building there too, don't you? Yeah, we got a couple of some things. Let's go check that out. There's not a whole bunch of this snow in there. Yeah, I want to go there. Let's go there. All right, man, this is this is where we should have been the whole time. This is a lot nicer in here. You did exactly kind of the same exact stuff in here as you did outside. Is that right? Yeah. Well, what we have here is a smaller arena for show horses. So this is their dressage arena. A lot of detail in here was the gates swinging back 180 degrees. So you got to pay attention to your drawings. Some gates do, some gates don't. The other challenge we had in here was a lot of the gates were designed to be in the middle of our corners as the one behind you and every single other corner in this arena. It's kind of a pain when you got to stop in the middle of your corner and you're trying to flex that panel right into your corner and make it a smooth corner because you got to stop and start in the corner. That does make a challenge. It's not very convenient at all. So right here in our corners, we got a gate that swings 180 degrees and I have limited space between the fence and the building. When we set our posts, we had to make sure that we added our space for our hinges and our latch to make sure we clear the walls on every single one of these so that they could swing all the way back without damaging the wall. I think it would have been fine if it just barely touched and you know just wore a spot in the wall. It's not that important. Just take a multi-tool and cut the rib out. So now that we're in a warmer climate, I can actually feel myself being able to talk a little bit better. Just looking at this short section right here, the amount of welding that's taking place is insane. 
you have to weld the top cap twice. You gotta weld the top rail. You have to weld the panel in place, your termination bracket. And then every single rail has a clip. So every post has one, two, three, four, five, six clips. So your panel has to be welded back to your post six times with six clips, but it has to be welded on both sides. So that's four welds per clip. Four times six is 24 welds just on securing the panels to the post, which is part of the reason that it's so detail oriented is because he has to sit here and do so much welding. Oh yeah, hey, by the way, if you're looking for some continuous fence panel clips, make sure and see the link below. So obviously you had a ton of challenges outside critical details that you had to watch and work over. But here on the inside, it seems like you had maybe just a little bit more detail that you had to work around. A little bit. What we had to actually end up doing, getting with the general contractor and setting our bucking chutes first because of the amount of panels that go in between. You're gonna get a bust if you don't have that set up right now as it's gonna be set up later because if that measurement is not right, we'll be back in here tearing that out and I'd rather just not deal with the headache. So I'd rather spend a little bit of time and help him do something that I'm not necessarily contracted to do, but it's going to help me in the meantime because I can get my posts set where they need to be and I don't have to come back and redo anything. So these are the bucking shits you're talking about and you set these first and then you built off of that. Yes, because we got gates that go off either side. We got a return alleyway that comes here. This return gate has to go out to the alleyway that we saw come in from the outside that we built. It's going to come through the prefer panels on the outside here. Everything has to tie in and lead back out to those stock pins. And just right in here, but then as soon as you round the corner, you have more gates in front of more doors. So you have to make sure that your gates and your doors line up. There's just an insane amount of stuff you probably had to work around and you had to deal with and make sure that everything is 100% correct. Uh-huh. That, and it takes a lot of time getting 34 foot sticks of top rail through a 14 foot door. Oh, well, I could see that being a problem. I didn't even think about that. Your door's only so wide, but your panels are 20 feet. So did you just like take some roof off and have them crane it in for you? Nope, we had to sling everything in and pull it in with skid steer. But you figured out a way to do it. Yeah. Now before we wrap up here, he already said that we, he has 160 yards of concrete in the ground containing all the posts for this project. He went through 700 pounds of rod, 130 gates on site. Is there anything else that I missed? I think we had 5,000 panel clamps. How many posts? Right at 1,200 posts. 1,200 posts. Not including the seven inch. 1,200 posts, but then also in top rail, you probably had about another 11,000 feet in length in top rail there that was, you had to weld. There was an entire semi-load and a half top rail that went on in, into this. Now how much would you say a stick top rail weighs? Uh, 200. Now, if you want to see him in action on another one of his jobs, make sure and see that job right here. We're here, he places a seven foot security chain link fence around the radio grounds in Cody, Wyoming. I'm Dan with SWI Wyoming. And I'm Almanzo with SWI. We hope you have a good dang day.